Kulab, a site that I have previously covered and also personally exposed the true scale of. Seemingly, or more than likely deliberately overlooked by academia, Kulab not only possesses an enormous ancient wall, which surrounds the entrance to the site, which according to academia, was seemingly placed upon the plateau of a naturally formed hill. However, after personally investigating this site myself, I found that not only had the wall constructed took unimaginable effort to build, but that the site beyond this impenetrable fortress had in fact been backfilled with earth, artificially creating the plateau that geologists, academics, and archaeologists alike long ignored and merely assumed was selected due to natural features, were in fact artificially created. However, it is clear for all to see that not only was the plateau painstakingly created to backfill to this fortress's wall, but the ingenious entrances were also the work of a people of tremendous intellect. Many of the passageways into the site allow many to enter the passages. However, as the invaders made their way along these elevations to penetrate the fortress itself, not only were they wide open to arrow fire from above from both sides, but also by design, the passageways slowly narrowed to a point where only one person at a time could actually enter the site. However, the purpose of this video is not the astonishing architectural features of the site itself, but possibly an exposure of the true creators of the site. A group of people with characteristics which may come as a shock to some and been long predicted by others. Found deep within a cave system within the site, a burial chamber at the depth of 800 meters, a burial chamber created at this location for the sole purpose of preserving these individuals' remains for as long as possible, and also to avoid the ravages tomb raiders that have been experienced over the eons by many of the other burial sites by many different cultures. There are many wooden idols that have seemingly been treated with lost technologies and have survived the climate astonishingly well. Yet, this set of mummies could expose once and for all who were responsible for this astonishing site and indeed its miraculous characteristics. Thankfully, although much of the ancient tombs had been ravaged by robbers over the years, this absence of mummies didn't deter archaeologist Warren Church who's worked for 19 years to save lost Pachudos and learn its secrets. Seemingly successfully unraveling its innermost protected secrets, and possibly coming face to face with its original builders, they were known as the Chachapoya, or the Cloud People by the Incas, who by this stage had re-inhabited the ancient pre-Incan ruins which dot Peru, and due to the ingenious nature of the fortress, the tremendous efforts that went into building it, and the seemingly impenetrable nature of its design, the Cloud People seemingly survived all the way up until the Spanish invasion, only succumbing to the introduction of smallpox, which the Spanish seemingly brought with them. An intriguing characteristic of these enigmatic people is the fact that they left no written language, yet adorned their site with countless stone carvings of orchids, butterflies, and jaguars. According to Warren Church, for more than 500 years, the Chachapoya cut farm terraces and villages into these steep slopes. This burial chamber, found deep within the site, shows that not only did they display great respect for their dead, but that they were of European origin, white-skinned and blonde-haired, with Church apparently stating that the mummies are of the most beautiful past people he has ever witnessed. Were these mummies the remains of the original builders of this astonishing site? Or were they like the Incas, merely re-inhabitations, although how they got there to these Peruvian hills and controllers of Kulap itself remains a mystery? Yet white mummies of a seemingly European ancestry have been found throughout the globe. Does this suggest that the ruling force we so often postulate once existed? that many known as the Atlanteans shared their knowledge across the globe before catastrophe? Regardless of their ethnicity, we find such research by church highly admirable and such discoveries highly compelling.
We have, as a species, long suffered the results of a civilization with foundations for understandings built upon outdated belief systems, and a funded academic institution in which one is rewarded for repetition rather than that of pioneering a theory which could shine a light upon the oldest, most controversial corners of human civilization. Where did we come from? How old is human civilization? These are questions which we have not only witnessed being ignored by the majority of mainstream academia, but have also shown, through what we believe is overwhelming evidence to prove that this same entity entrusted with the accurate account of human history, has not only concealed a reality which threatens many mainstream belief systems, but also the modern attested theory of evolution as a whole. Entire chapters of human history, and also, more than likely, entire branch of subspecies of giant humanoid remains removed from the history books, concealed within kilometers of hidden artifacts hidden away, withheld from the masses, often in favor of profitable avenues, born out of stability of understandings which powerful institutions grown out of which, in turn, protect their own survival, rather than that of the allowance of furthering the understandings of the common man. There is not only strong evidence still to be found all over the planet of past, highly advanced civilizations which displayed capabilities far beyond that of any civilization within the permitted timelines of investigations, but prove the tremendous age of some of these ancient ruins. These relics, far from mere ruins, are in reality more accurately described as the fossilized remains of human activities that do not just stretch a few hundred thousand years into the ancient past but due to the time needed to develop such features, are indicative of a civilization nearly or possibly over a million years in age. The great stones within the western wall, for example, are not only far in excess of any weights the already studied permitted ancient ancestors within known history were capable of moving, or indeed using as building blocks. But fortunately, this site still possesses ancient wooden stakes, presumably once used within the method of construction, which regardless of the fact that the method is still an enigma to modern understandings, the wood, in contrast to stone relics, can indicate an age as to when this foundation was undertaken, petrified, fossilized, now stone blocks of what was once wood that are unquestionably of an incredible age, support our argument of this far-spanning, currently dismissed chapter of ancient human civilization, which, if embraced by mainstream science, would not only prove this past beyond doubt, but would in turn threaten many currently highly profitable and as such extremely powerful and in turn influential belief systems and the institutions which have grown up around them in regards to ancient human origins and development. Fossilized tree roots can also be found upon the megalithic blocks of Gornea Shoria. Many other sites, like that of the inexplicable ancient temples of Petra, in some of the less publicized areas of the site, display immense erosion regardless of the site's relatively sheltered location. It seems that many of these oldest of sites not only often lay below several feet of sediment, which due to the funded and as such same rhetoric within geological studies forbids said sites to even be recognized as that of the past work of intelligent man. Due to this immense age, any human remains that may have been left by these ancient builders would have long turned to dust or have been fossilized at the site. Concealed upon their discovery, or like any site which gains notoriety within mainstream media, secretly revisited and ransacked of any evidence of this incredible age. We believe that possibly the only remaining traces of these past ancestors can now only be found within the most obscure and curious of places, like that of the Altamura Man, for example. A rare fossil 
apparently of the genus Homo, discovered in 1993 in the karst sinkhole in the Lama Lunga cave near the city of Altamura within Italy, that thanks to its location and the near impossible feat it would be to remove him, has been left in situ for the world to see, and thanks to where he fortunately lay, has been slowly growing ever since his death. He is quite possibly of an immense age and died an incredibly long time ago, and has, instead of slowly decaying away, fading away like the world which he once lived within, has continued to be preserved in the calcite that has grown around him. Remarkably well-preserved but embedded in stalagmites and covered in a thick layer of calcite, the find was left in situ in order to avoid damage. Research during the following 20 years has been based mainly upon documented on-site observations. Consequently, experts have conveniently remained reluctant to agree on a conclusive age and have thus never arrived at a mainstream consensus on the species it belonged to. In a 2015 paper, published in the Journal of Human Evolution, it was announced that the fossil was apparently a Neanderthal, and dating of the calcite has revealed that the bones are possibly older than 187,000 years old. How old is human civilization? Where do we come from? These questions persist. And as such, so do our endeavors of exposing the truth regarding the reality of these remarkable relics of a now forgotten history. Relics which we find highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. There are a considerable number of ancient anomalies located within Egypt. These ancient feats of engineering litter sites and the quarries the stones were sourced and shaped at. And although many of you would have heard of Aswan Quarry, Elephantine may be a less familiar location to you, and for good reason. Not only are the pyramids one of the most perplexing, near perfectly constructed, and as yet unexplained ancient architectural accomplishments on Earth. But how an ancient civilization, supposedly placed within permitted known archaeological history, accomplished such a feat, or indeed why? What was their original purpose? Academic contradiction, a severe lack of anomalous artifacts explored, never mentioned or somehow conveniently go unnoticed. However, in the real world, beyond the boundaries of the fenced or so-called schools of education, thanks to our own work and the presentation of such a volume of inexplicable events artifacts, ruins or megaliths, along with many others allied within similar fields, independently funded researchers, investigative agents, and many more sometimes even noticed first by a viewer credited with its rediscovery within our coverage. Thanks to all this movement working to expose such enigmas, has meant that not only are these incredible characteristics now being documented, mentioned, popularized, photographed and studied more and more each day, now being recognized by more and more critically thinking individuals individually finding evidence of lost technologies that had until then either been undiscovered or deliberately overlooked by the funded academic. The vast catalog of unexplained architecture, again growing by the day, but also the often accompanying curious stone cuts, scars, and striations, all clearly left by high-speed disc-cutting machine, a signature tool mark, identical to that which is left by modern-day power tools, along with the still-absent demonstration of the methods used to construct the pyramids leads anyone to this ongoing and seemingly most controversial of arguments regarding the origins of the ruins found across Egypt. The Colossus of Memnon, each one weighing far over 1,000 tons, would sing every morning an amazing ability we have covered in a previous video, a curious characteristic reported all the way up until the Roman era. We also covered the thick layer of sea salt once found coating the pyramid's ground and underground caverns, 
along with a water line reported at around 40 meters up their sides, still visible during the Spanish invasion. This clearly suggests that the pyramids and their accompanying sphinx are in reality so old they even had once been submerged in ocean waters. An ancient ocean which over the eons has shifted, leaving behind sediment in the form of the desert sands. There are many enormous ancient megalithic stones hidden in and around the three great pyramids of Egypt. Not only are there enormous ancient stones virtually hidden in plain sight, thus although walked across, largely overlooked, hardly ever mentioned, and never explained in regards to their transport and placement, as modern academia will never be able to provide a logical, sound explanation for these feats. The casing stones, an area of interest we have explored and documented, not only displayed vastly different ages, but also construction methods and types of stones sourced and used. Ultimately, undeniable proof of efforts to preserve the outer stones of these incredible ancient pyramids later on within their history. Signature tool marks, unique features such as protuberances, masonry shapes, polygonal stone walling, and many other features which we have discovered during our explanations into the relics of lost antiquity. Yet Egypt's most intriguing assets, and we feel the most baffling relics which all alternative historians should have within their debacle armory, are undoubtedly to be found within the once abruptly abandoned quarries. The unfinished obelisk found at Aswan, being one such relic, the most well-known of these incredible stones by a long way, not only is the obelisk over 1,000 tons, but also due to the identifiable scoop-like tool marks left upon its granite sides, a signature scarring, which again we have so far found, explored and shared this marking at many other ancient sites around the world. Who were the original builders of the Great Pyramids? Were they the same group that quarries Aswan? What tools did these people use to cut many of the relics still left at the Elephantine Island Quarry? How can anyone gaze upon such precision stonework and not ponder? How did he accomplish such an incredible finish with such hard stone, with such soft chisels and those made of copper? Not only do we find the currently attested tale of events vastly incomplete, but in many ways virtually impossible. Predictably, we are often confronted with an illogical explanation as to the origins of many unexplainable ruins. Yet Egypt, in particular Aswan and Giza, were clearly the work of a group capable of working and building with 1,000 ton plus stones. With columns of pink Aswan granite, weighing over 14 tons each, over 10,000 kilometers to Baalbek. Is this connection mere coincidence? Or are the builders of said sites connected somehow? Possibly one and the same? Questions we get closer to answering every day. We find it highly compelling.